You have to evangelize expectations. And you know what? You might be sitting there thinking, well, that's kind of a pretty simple end-of-the-line end rule tip to come up with, ex, talk about expectations. Of course we do. Let me tell you something. I think it's one of the most overlooked elements in every culture that I work with. The, the, the ability to not only communicate expectations, but to evangelize them in such a way that they evoke maximum performance out of people. Again, people are dying inside for someone to raise the bar on them, to actually hold them to some high expectations. Now, I, someone made a comment, I don't remember who it was, about the idea of you come back from an event like this and you're all excited and you're bouncing off the wall. Was that you? You're talking, you come back and you're all fired up. You know, and you're like, all right, gang, we're going to change the world. We're going to raise the bar. And your people are looking at you like, oh my gosh, here he goes again. Just came back from another conference. Give him three or four days and he'll totally peter out on it. And I know so that's what you're thinking. If I go back and I'm like all high on this. So what if you go back and you say to your people, you know what, gang? I haven't always held myself to the highest expectations. But you know what? Changes today. And I want your help to hold me accountable to raise the bar. And I'm putting everybody on notice, collectively, if we are going to create a culture that rocks, we've got to raise the expectations for all of us. Right? Mediocrity doesn't stand around here. We're going to set the expectations. We're going to measure the expectations. And you know what? I don't care what generation they are. They're 22 or 62. If you show up and go through the motions and you can't meet these expectations, there's the door. Hey, this isn't the right place for you. And you want to know the truth? That starts in the interview process for you moving forward. Do you know what we do? We sugarcoat the reality of a lot of these jobs. People come in and we don't talk about how crappy they really are. We don't talk about how boring they really are. And then people come in and they get into it. People say, ah, they're not le loyal. They leave. They leave because many times they're bored out of their mind. They're pulling a lever all day long. And we didn't tell them that in the beginning. Set the expectations early and often. And if you do this for yourself and for your people, you will unleash this magical element and idea of ownership. See, we all, from, from a society standpoint, but from a culture standpoint, we all got to take ownership on this stuff. My generation too, all of us. God, own the responsibility. I love Ryan's video with Thomas Friedman. The idea of carving your initials into the saddle. You're so bloody proud of it that you put your name on it. Who, has anyone ever said that to you? The 24-year-old who's working on your shop floor? Who's working in the warehouse? Has anyone ever said to them, this task that you're doing, if you treat it like as if you were putting your name in it? Let me tell you something. No one in their life has probably ever said that to them. And if you do, as we're going to see in this closing commercial, it's unbelievable the magic that we tap into when we show up in our lives, and whether it is with our family, our jobs, our life, what happens when we actually own it.